what is the cost? They forced like cheap labor and it's in service of capitalism. Hey guys, welcome back to Seoul, a podcast on the creative soul. Today we are joined by Iki and Jinji's mom, the entrepreneur who started Mooney Mooney Studios. She is also a plantita who loves the environment. And we will be talking about the sustainable efforts of Mooney Mooney, how she got to this slow, sustainable fashion from her previous job, and why she wants to be a farmer in another way. Hey Lara, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. How is it going? How are you? Thank you so much for having me. It's been good. We had a shoot earlier, so we're kind of like... <laughs> yeah, what was your shoot yeah. about? Um, we So we met Sarah during our mm. event last week and she's like visiting Manila or Philippines mm. for, her, for the first time. This is the model. Yeah, yeah, the model. Okay. She's based in Japan. Mm -hmm. And so we just found her energy so attractive. And so we just like asked her if she wanted mm -hmm. to shoot with us. So she was game and we did like a whole fun wow. setup earlier. How yeah. long was the shoot for? It was supposed to go on from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, yeah. but it went on for longer because we all had fun. Okay. <laughs> How many layouts though? We were supposed to do three. We ended up doing maybe like six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Everyone just had fun. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. everyone was just like Good creative. Energy. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. Exactly. Um, for the viewers and the listeners who don't know you, would you mind introducing yourself? Okay. Um, I'm Lara Rapanan. Um, I founded Mooney Mooney six years ago. And um, yeah, <laughs> like expound. But yeah. yes, so basically I'm doing Muni Muni Studio mm -hmm. full time. And um, we work with communities all over the mm -hmm. Philippines and we produce products like shoes and clothes yeah. that are sustainably sourced. So it's mm -hmm. an exploration of um, sustainable practices and sustainable production. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll talk more about that. But before, we want to get to know more about you. Okay. And our team has prepared some questions. Okay. But this isn't fast talk. We'll just need you to All right. pick a number from one to eight. Okay. And then we will ask you... A question based off of that number. Okay. Eight. Eight. Give us a hot take about a fashion brand that everyone loves, but you don't super like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I think this is going to be a bit easy for me because, mm -hmm. okay, fast fashion. Let's okay. go into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of people still, I think, um, don't recognize the difference between uh, the practices in production between mm -hmm. like slow fashion brands and fast fashion mm -hmm. brands. Of course, a lot of people are aware now, yeah. but I feel like brands like Zara and um, <laughs> all the Zara <laughs> fanboys, fan girls. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not trying. Mm -hmm. They are. I mean, H and M has like uh, released this whole campaign about recycling yeah. and all that, mm -hmm. but. I guess it just doesn't justify or it doesn't save them from all the, I guess, inherently bad practices that have been done mm -hmm. in the past. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not going to say like everyone likes them. I'm just saying that there's still not a clear line up to this point. Okay. Yeah. So moving from there. Okay. <laughs> and knowing that, you know, you've already sort of defined right. fast fashion vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis slow fashion. Give us some more, like, if you were to explain it to a first grader. Okay. How would you explain fast fashion versus slow fashion? Okay. So, fast fashion was coined after the um, the definition fast. It's mm -hmm. because usually, like, a high-end brand would have a lead time of a year in terms of planning, production, and launching the campaigns. Okay. And so what happened with, with fast fashion is they shortened that period mm -hmm. into like three months, two months. Zara even does it for one month. Okay. So like at some point they were like fresh styles off the runway. Mm -hmm. You know that like term? Yeah, it yeah. means that they are able to make designs from the runway in a month's time or two mm -hmm. months time. Okay. But like what is the cost? Mm -hmm. Like what, um, what has to give, right? Yeah. And... Um, what happened is they've forced labor, they've forced like cheap labor also mm -hmm. in like different parts of the world for that to happen. And it's in service of capitalism. Okay. So, yeah. so that just juxtaposed to slow fashion is um, 
sorry, for lack of a better term, better. <laughs> I mean, I mean, explain yeah. to explain to us what slow fashion is okay, from so coming slow, from from that definition. Right. So slow fashion, I would say, is more humane. Mm-hmm. It takes into consideration humans as like people, not as resources. Okay. So um, I think capitalist. I don't hate capitalism. I think capitalism has gotten us here. Okay. We wouldn't be here sitting with our phones, with lights in, mm-hmm. uh, in a room, like air conditioning also, if capitalism didn't exist. Okay. And so I'm not against it. Mm-hmm. It's just that it has created some, like, um, I guess, detrimental industries, okay. de- detrimental practices also that has treated humans as resources instead okay. of people, right. instead of humans. Right. So yeah. we were in one of your pop-ups. I had a chance to talk to you, yes. and then we, you mentioned that you used to be a, in corporate. Yes. And in a fast fashion okay. brand. Um, what made you shift? Okay. From from that industry to, I mean, a similar industry, but in the slow fashion. Right. Okay. So let me give you like a deeper background to mm-hmm. that. I just mentioned earlier, I graduated business econ. Mm. <laughs> so we literally, I literally studied capitalism. Yeah, you are a capitalist. <laughs> as my degree, <laughs> as my yeah. major. And so graduating from that, I kind of like, I was brainwashed, I would say. Like, mm-hmm. like looking from where I am now, my head was just like, okay, we have to do this. We yeah. got to achieve this in yeah. order to like create a society or to create uh, a balance within our society. Mm-hmm. But then... Um, during that stint in fast fashion, so corporate, Mm -mm. I did corporate after I graduated. Um, it's just, it didn't sit well with me, Mm -hmm. um, realizing how it all happens and even like how corporations and companies work in, I, I wouldn't say in all countries, but particularly in the Philippines, like the situation is not ideal Mm -hmm. and so um i would say i was awakened during that moment like seeing how people are overworked underpaid and all of that yeah and so um it was during that time i was awakened to the realities and then um and that's when i realized i wanted to be part of the change Mm. if there could be yeah Yeah. can you give us more of a glimpse of the things that you you know, that you saw mm-hmm. that gave you that sudden change of heart? Um, it was just basically that, like how fast things have been produced and how mm-hmm. cheap things mm-hmm. are produced. And it was also around that time Fashion Revolution was launched. Okay. You know, the documentary True Cost. Mm-hmm. Like it explains what goes on mm-hmm. in like factories in Bangladesh yeah. and all of these like... Um, uh, the conditions are really not humane and um, it was around that time I started my research about like how we can do things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And this is when Mooney Mooney was born. I had my first brand before Mooney Mooney. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell us about what. What was your first? Yeah, brand? it was Habin. Okay. But basic the co- the principle is the same. Um, but we started going around communities in the Philippines where they still had their traditional crafts intact. Okay. So, like, we went around Ilocos, we went around Bicol, Mm -hmm. where there's abaca weaving, where there's inabel weaving, Mm -hmm. which is our um, hand-woven fabrics. Yeah. Um, So, we did a lot of research for that. We um, met with a lot of communities also. And so, uh, that's where we started. We started doing um, bags and shoes at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still running now or you transitioned to Mooney? We transitioned to Mooney. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's still under the same, um, I guess, logistics and uh, everything that you've... Like the, the, the blueprint that you created. Migrated, basically. So, okay. like, have been migrated to Mooney Mooney. Okay. Yeah. Tell us more about Mooney Mooney. Okay. Um, I hear some of our team members here have been a cons- customer since 2018. <laughs> 2018. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Tell us more about that and and how you, um, I guess, made that change. Okay. Migrated from Habin to Muni Muni and and what you've been doing so far. Okay. The principle is the same. So working with communities, Mm -hmm. 
uh, trying to produce responsibly, uh, doing the research on sustainable production, sustainable resource, uh, sustainable sourcing. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, what happens with Muni Muni is we create small batches of clothes and shoes, mm-hmm. and we work closely with our artisans. Okay. So instead of like production or laborers, yeah. there are artisans because. To be honest, they've been doing these kinds of crafts for decades. Yeah. Like they have mastered it, like mm. more than ten thousand hours for sure. Mm. And um, I just don't think they're valued enough in our society. Okay. Especially here in the Philippines. Like when I first came into it, they didn't think that they could sell their products at a certain price because it's local. It's mm. locally made. Like mm-hmm. there's that um, perception yeah. to like local products being like cheap yeah and bad quality yeah. and so they didn't believe it them- themselves mm-hmm. that they are artisans that they yeah. are craftsmen and so that's part of the story that we kind of built over these years working with our communities we try to empower them and like um make them realize that they're making art that yeah. they are craftsmen so yeah. Yeah. So it's not just about creating a locally sourced, environmentally yes. sustainable process. Mm-hmm. It's also about giving dignity to these artists. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Why do you feel so strongly about that? That is a good <laughs> question because I actually, I really don't know. I mean, maybe it's stemming from spending time with them and mm-hmm. really getting to know their journeys, their struggles. Like, I guess it's really just like, the empathy mm-hmm. um, that comes from there, like spending time with them, getting yeah. to know them. And How long have you been working with these artisans? For most of them, like for six years now. Already? Or yeah. yeah, when we started doing clothes like three years ago. Mm-hmm. So like three years ago, six and three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, how are you able to find all these different people? I'm sure there was like some backstory yes. of... Um, maybe having the source for, for the local artisans. Mm-hmm. How did you know where to go and who the right people were? Okay. So during our first research, we got in touch with DTI. Mm-hmm. And so there are a lot of government organizations that try to get in touch with these artisanal communities mm. all over the Philippines also. But that's just when it first started. Okay. You know, there will be like high turnover with these kinds of relationships mm-hmm. because some of them are also not trusting of you. Like, okay. they've been struggling all their lives, yeah. and so they really couldn't um, put their trust in you yeah. all of a sudden. And right. so it takes a while to build that kind of relationship. Like, you can trust me, and I will also, like, take care of you. Yeah, um, yeah it's that exchange. It's that building of trust over the years that you work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, is this very similar to the way local farmers work? Uh, in the I sense th- that... They I think so. Get their crops. They sell it to these bigger corporations. I think so. Okay. I think so, and it's the same story with farmers where they don't know how much their mm. their products are being sold out there, but yeah. it's because of all the middlemen, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I think it's a very similar narrative. Do you do the designs yourself, or are they designs by the artisans? Both. Okay. So yeah, it's a collaborative effort by the team also, like everyone involved in the process, mm-hmm. like they would have their own like creative footprint okay. in the final releases. Yeah. Can you walk us through that process? How do you um, conceptualize something and then communicate that to the artisans for them to then make with their hands mm-hmm. and for you guys to sell in your store? Okay, so it's um, it's a back and forth also. Sometimes it comes from them initially. Sometimes it comes from us initially. And then it's just, there's a lot of iterations along the way mm-hmm. before it becomes an actual like finished product mm-hmm. also. Even like campaign titles. Um, I read this um, like excerpt from a book mm-hmm. which says, the work reveals itself as you go. Okay, And so like just... But in the work, just keep yeah. showing up and like it comes to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are your inspirations on your designs? Uh, nature. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not too obvious. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, meaning the function of nature or the fact that you would want people to wear your right. clothing right. in okay. nature? Okay, so because it's really rooted in sustainability, mm-hmm. 
we both kind of want nature to be part of the back end and the front end. So okay. it's part of the narrative. It's part of the story that we carry. Yeah. But it's also part of production. Like literally, we work with a lot of natural fibers. Mm. We work with natural dyes mm-hmm. also to our clothing. And so mm-hmm. it's kind of really um, inserted in the whole process. Yeah, in the DNA. Of the- yes. So we use a lot of dead stock fabric, which is like run down materials mm. at the end of its life cycle okay. and we try to um, restore them using okay. natural dyes so that's oh. when we apply natural dyes to like those kinds of fabrics but sometimes we would find like scraps also that we can work with and so mm. we make designs out of those our designs also come from what we can source okay. or what is available All out right. there yeah so that's one um restriction right it's part, it's part of the creative process for you to f- yeah maybe work within the limits of your source yes you know analysis yeah. paralysis so it's the yes. opposite of that because ah. you have these kinds of restrictions i feel like it helps us design better it eliminates other factors you have mm-hmm. to consider do you ever want or have that desire na sana wala kang limitations not so much because mm-hmm. there's so much waste out there okay. like in reality yeah. like there's so much blank canvases that you can start mm-hmm. with, which is like part of the goal. And it's, um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the main creative head? You're the one who designs most of it. I would say it's all a team effort. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, how many of you guys in the team right now? Four. <laughs> <laughs> Plus yeah. the artisans, like four in uh-huh. the head office. And yeah. All the artisans that are involved. And how does the creative process happen within the four plus the artisans? So there, we start with materials that mm-hmm. we are able to source per collection, for example. And then we try to make samples out of it, like mm-hmm. see what works, what kinds of silhouettes should be applied yeah. on, what kinds of colors also um, can we use this time. So yeah. for example, we um, got in touch with a community in Abra and they've sent us some sapang barks, mm-hmm. which is a, a tree that grows in Abra. Yeah. And so it creates this beautiful red color. And wow, so okay. our last collection was like filled with that color right. because <laughs> that's what we have on hand. Okay. Yeah. Does it ever become hard for you to keep a consistency with regards to sizing or mm-hmm. you know, um, even quality assurance? How do you guys go about all right. of that? Our biggest issue right now in production is the lead time or the wait Mm -hmm. because they're all most of them are for Mm pre-order it means we only produce after an order has been placed okay yeah which is so against what we've learned in fast fashion right that you can get them so fastly so cheaply and so um that's our main challenge because we really don't want to be at the other end of the spectrum to make the customer wait as much right um it's just that this is the most sustainable way we can produce at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to move away from that and like find other clever ways to go around okay. it. Yeah. So you work sort of like a designer. Yes. Where um, there are certain pieces in the rack, but for that designer to make one specifically right. for you, you right. have to get fitted yes. and all of that. Yes. So moving to your advocacy, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm sure the whole process is not 100% sustainable. Yes. As with anything that's, you know, in this capitalist world, yes. right? What is the best and worst thing about owning a clothing brand? Finances. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's because we're not a nonprofit. Okay. And we have so much of these advocacies that we try to balance, like, being a business with, yeah. all this like social responsibility yeah. that we've taken for ourselves mm-hmm. and so i think that's the biggest and main challenge that we have is to balance that out mm-hmm. um that's where i try to like bring in my econ <laughs> background mm-hmm. is to yeah. like to shift uh, to balance demand and supply right. and pricing and all of that okay. yeah um what are the challenge how do they look like what are the challenges that um, you face day to day Okay, so because we're a very small production business, mm-hmm. um, we get like challenges in terms of making demands meet. Like mm-hmm. sometimes there's so much more demand than we can produce on our end. And so there would be a lot of like 
um, wait on the customer's end. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they really can't like place any orders because we really can't produce anything. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas in a capitalist like alternative, yeah. you just produce, 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 yeah. and sell, 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 right? So that balancing balancing all of that mm-hmm. and making sure everyone is taken care of, like yeah. all the artisans are mm-hmm. taken care of. Um, yeah. Being a for-profit organization, mm-hmm. what is the priority? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also I'm learning that yeah. every day. Because <laughs> um, you, you you we you mentioned taking care of everyone, and mm-hmm. I'm sure that's part of um part of the bottom line, right? Yes. But at the end of the day, it's a for-profit. Yes. And you have overhead. Yes. You have employees. Um, what is the how how do you end up prioritizing what to put your finances in? As long as everyone gets their salaries <laughs> at like certain days or times of the week, because mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think the people the people would come first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's that's noble of you. <laughs> <laughs> Has it no. ever been a problem like with regards to like the realities of life? Like you have. Yes. Bills to pay taxes. To yes, pay, like exactly. That. Rent. We yeah. also have rent. Like when it comes down to it, we all still live in this society. Yeah. And so we have to function within the confines mm-hmm. of the society, of the rules, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, it can't all just be noble, mm-hmm. as you mentioned. Yeah. And so that's where I try to find the balance. Between... Putting in your econ brain. Also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, again. <laughs> but yes, yeah. yes. Tell me about Muni Muni. Okay. Why is that the name of okay. the brand? It just came to me mm-hmm. randomly. How about like Mumuni Muni? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> most likely. But I still had Habin back then. Mm-mm. But then the name Muni Muni came to me. And I was like, I have to save this for something. Maybe I'll write a blog or something. Mm-hmm. Or I'll start something with mm-hmm. the name Muni Muni. Um, I think, yeah. Habang nag Muni Muni. Like in deep thought mm-hmm. or to reflect. It just makes so much sense. It captures the essence of what we're doing currently yeah. it's just like we're putting a lot of thought in all our decisions like in all the practices that we do mm-hmm. so i feel like it's just a perfect name and it's also filipino it's yeah. it's deep not deep filipino but um not everyone knows about it yeah. and so i feel like when the world starts paying attention to you they would be interested as to why it is Muni Muni. Yeah. And like we would be proud to say that it's a Filipino word yeah. that, that means to think or to reflect. Yeah. We're very much rooted with our Filipino-ness. Mm-hmm. Although I would say that each culture is unique mm-hmm. and each culture is so interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think we are inspired by mm-hmm. multiple different cultures. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Apart from the, you know, the Konya girls in this room, um, who are your target audience? <laughs> who is the target market of Muni Muni? <laughs> okay, so we've been having conversations about this recently. Mm-hmm. We try to be as accessible as we can. Mm-hmm. That's why we're trying to keep our prices as they are mm-hmm. because we don't want exclusivity to like a certain demographic. Right. As much as we can, we want it to be accessible to anyone who mm-hmm. understands it anyone okay. who like sees the value in it okay. if you like value the people that create your clothes or that create your products the yeah. products that you use yeah so it's about the conscious consumer yes yeah well put yeah <laughs> what is it that you hope for muni muni in the next year just to spread the word more mm-hmm. and outwards hopefully mm-hmm. like outside of our country Okay. I feel like we need to be heard more. We need to like speak louder to make more of a dent or to make more of an impact. Yeah. I mean, like with all these hardships that right now Southeast Asia yeah. is facing, I feel like we have to speak even louder mm-hmm. so the right people can hear and the right people can do something about it. Right. It's funny because like the other day I saw this news article saying that Bangkok is or like Southeast Asia is suffering like this much heat because of summer okay. but then we're not the main contributors to climate change mm-hmm. like we're not fossil fuel producers yeah. right and so like it's just so ironic that we are suffering and they get the like benefit get all yeah, yeah harvest all the benefits from it so 
it's just ironic. And so it, I guess it's part of our mission also to speak about mm. it conceptually. Like yeah. in terms of production, we are doing something about it, but not in an impact or not in a scale that really, you know, will save the right. earth. Yeah. But like conceptually and in terms of like our voice, the yeah. message we carry, I think that's like our role. In I have a question. Go. And in, in in the grand scheme of things, a lot of these capitalist brands also have a, a sustainable arm, mm-hmm. especially given the climate now. Mm-hmm. Like you, you think of something like Patagonia mm. and they talk about how everything is, you know, like it can last a lifetime mm-hmm. or it's recycled and mm-hmm. all of that. Um, but then they use materials like Gore-Tex, mm-hmm. which is like uh, mi- microplastic that would last forever it doesn't disintegrate Mm -hmm. and so you have that aspect of it that's not as sustainable right um and there's a lot of brands that are like that and Mm -hmm. i'm not not hating on patagonia okay (laughs) but it's just the reality is uh, as much as we want to be sustainable it's quite impossible to be completely carbon neutral yes do you think that the um efforts of muni muni is enough to create a change i don't think so honestly at this point we're so small Mm -hmm. that we can't even make a dent Mm -hmm. to the whole problem Mm -hmm. but we're trying yeah i think no one is perfect and sustainability is not black and white there's so much like gray area Mm -hmm. in between and patagonia i think is doing well in terms of scale in terms of impact mm-hmm. i think the founder recently just gave up all his shares to yeah, the I company did, yeah. uh, the employers mm-hmm. right and so i think like good on them good for them um as i said like it's not black and white mm-hmm. and i think as long as you're trying as mm-hmm. long as you understand that inaction is so detrimental mm-hmm. to what's happening with climate yeah. What is um, the thing that hurts your heart the most about what's happening in the environment? Oh, Um, a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would cry sometimes, you know, seeing news, uh, like forests burning, Mm -hmm. like animals going uh, extinct. And I was actually like talking to somebody about this the other day. In our efforts to save earth Mm -hmm. we're really not saving earth we're saving ourselves because earth is going to revive itself with or without us Mm -hmm. and so if it comes to a point where it really can't take anymore Mm -hmm. it will just reboot itself it doesn't matter what happens to us and so we're really not saving earth we're saving ourselves Mm -hmm. so we need to save ourselves because like for example if earth needs to reboot itself reboot its climate it's just gonna get hot or it's just gonna get super cold it doesn't matter what's on it what's Mm. in it right and so yeah in our actions in saving earth we are saving ourselves climate justice talks about a lot of injustices also so have you heard about intersectional environmentalism no tell me about it yeah it's basically saying that um social justice is part of climate justice okay um like the wars that's been going on, Mm -hmm. like it's also related to climate justice. And so it's basically saying that it's a whole ecosystem that we need to address Mm -hmm. like as a society. So I think they all go hand in hand and we really can't just focus on one thing and then let go of the other things. I feel like that's why we're all put here to like kind of do our own little things. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, with your with this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> you are like addressing a lot mm-hmm. of the issues that we kind of need to tackle as humanity. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think we all have like our different pockets of roles. With okay, yeah. so basically, um, it's one of the things that we need. To yes, do. and every issue that we have as a society sort of works hand in hand. Yes, um, can you give us tips? On how a regular person, <laughs> apart from, you know, buying stuff in Muni Muni. Uh, <laughs> or just follow Muni Muni. Yeah, or just like, follow Muni hear, hear what Muni Muni has to say. <laughs> um, what are practical tips that you could give for people to, to live more sustainably? Okay. Just question everything you see. Okay. Yeah. Just don't believe the first thing you see on okay, the internet. So like, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, do your own research also. Okay. Like, read more before 
you know, you decide on something. Like, you really can't know the truth anymore in this age. There's so much information going mm-hmm. around in there. So just, like, take it with a grain of salt. You need to discern between where to listen. Mm-hmm. So if you have, like, trusted information sources, at least you know that they would give you something closer to to the truth. Mm-hmm. But then, even so you also still like take it with a grain of salt. Again, it's not black and white, yeah. but you can tell if something is true or moral, mm-hmm. right, or not. So I think it comes with our own discernment. Uh-huh. It comes with practice also. Yeah. And the willingness, the open-mindedness to know like what could be the truth. Yeah. So for example, I wouldn't believe a TikTok that I see okay. versus like a, a peer-reviewed study mm-hmm. <laughs> that okay. I read. So no- <laughs> no, ta <ha>, mga TikTokers. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, when it comes down to technicality, I think mm-hmm. the closer it is to, like, a scientifically based, I don't know, study, it's closer probably to the okay. truth. All right. So, so knows, we're, we're like, talking about empirical data. Yeah. We're talking about things that are yeah. researched, peer reviewed, things like that. Uh, where do you usually get your sources? <laughs> <laughs> on the internet <laughs> the thing we're not supposed to yeah. trust <laughs> <laughs> on the interwebs but yeah I yeah. mean where else where else would you on an encyclopedia <laughs> like, people still have those yeah. shout out to yeah. the 90s kids <laughs> so Lara we talked a lot about your advocacy we talked a lot about Muni Muni the kind of advocacy that you have making sure that things are sustainable things are um, you know are as carbon neutral as possible, that it helps in not just the societies, the lo- the local artisans, um, but as well as the environment. These are things that are quite, for lack of a better term, larger than life. These are things mm-hmm. that are hard to carry. Mm-hmm. How has it been like for you? What struggles have you experienced in the process of building your brand and making sure that you stay aligned to that vision and to that goal? Sometimes it's a little tiring, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like having to carry, as you mentioned, that much weight Mm -hmm. on your shoulders. But also, like, at the end of the day, it's really still fun to, like, work with communities, work Mm -hmm. with a lot of creatives locally also. Mm -hmm. I'm just really grateful to, Mm -hmm. like, to be in this position. And so that's just how I approach it whenever it gets a little tiring, whenever Mm -hmm. I'm a little burnt down Mm -hmm. also. I just, like, reset, you know, and just move on to tomorrow with, like, fresh eyes uh, you're i'm sure you're p- familiar with burnouts yes. right mm-hmm. um sometimes it just gets too much you feel like you don't have enough time for yourself mm-hmm. and so i feel like you just have to go inward and like what makes you happy does your like family make mm-hmm. you happy does your pets <laughs> make you happy and your so, lovely cats <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you met them right <laughs> yeah so just like take a reset take mm-hmm. time for yourself uh, like what gives you happiness and just take a break. And then get, you get back re-centered. to it. Yeah. Okay. If you were to stop doing Muni Muni. Okay. What do you think you'd be doing? Farming. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I have my rooftop, <laughs> my rooftop farm. Like okay. I've been growing my dye stuff there. Oh, like things I used to dye with, flowers yeah. also. Why farming? I, I guess it's so embedded into nature also. Mm-hmm. Like touching earth. Mm -hmm. You know, like seeing the roots from the flowers. It's just so enriching. Like I just genuinely enjoy Mm -hmm. it. I would want to move on to like fruits and herbs Mm -hmm. eventually. But right now, that's all I have. Like Mm -hmm. houseplants and dye stuff. But I've been growing my ginger. So I don't know if that counts. So if (laughs) someone has like sore throat, they'll go to you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I know how to make ginger too. (laughs) So you are a plantita. Yes. (laughs) Yes, I'm a proud plantita. So... Moving from that, it seems like you are really just rooted in this, you know, wanting to be one with the earth. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're like that kind of person, Well put. Sometimes I just want to sink into moss. (laughs) Um, Girl moss. (laughs) (laughs) Girl. Not a snow angel, a moss angel. I just want to get into... Actually, I just really want to get into that mindset. mindset. Like, why are you this... Like, why do you have such a big motivation to be, you know, one with the earth? Mm-hmm. I just, I guess it's just the peace that I get, mm-hmm. like, whenever I'm in nature. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people will um, 
understand that feeling like yeah. when they go on a hike or yeah. something or when they're just surrounded with nature it yeah. just feels right mm-hmm. and actually there's a study you can research about it but um mm. just not on the top <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah our visions are created to see um trees or forests more naturally mm. than it is in like concrete and urban environments okay so basically when we're in concrete and urban settings we have to work more like our eyes Mm. and our brains have to work more whereas whenever we're in nature like we can just like relax it just comes naturally to us so long Hmm. story short you're really just you really just love being i guess with nature it's just it's that peace yeah the mind goes quiet Mm -hmm. yeah in a good way in a good way. Yeah, not the deafening silence sort of yes. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have deafening silence? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Uh, like uh, some tinnitus when I, before I sleep or I don't know. <laughs> para, na, para na flashbang. Ganun. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's nice to know that you are really the type of person who walks the talk, no? That you are the type of thank person you. who tries. I'm, yeah, to, tries I'm not to, sure. Also, you, you try yes, your best you. to, to, to be able to live sustainably, to you. make your own ginger, you know, things yeah. like that. Um, and it's it's really uh, inspiring to know there are people like you out there. Um, what can you tell the people listening? Those who want to be like you, those who want to care more about the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it that you can impart, like a wisdom that you can impart from your years of, okay. of just being this person who loves earth? Um, it's easy to start. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to spend a lot of time if you feel like you have that spark, then just start on something really small. Like, something you can pick up or Mm -hmm. something you can do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to begin. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for your time, Lara. We super appreciate it. Where can people find you? Thank you. On (laughs) moonimooney.studio. On Instagram. And the website also. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. much. Thanks, Maki. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.